I'm pretty excited right now because you guys know that South How can container, I not keep, how I can I not keep the container and said, what the hell is this? The thing that's interesting, of course, this is part of the Genesis because there's no mail in here and they look like they're fertile. That's really going to be this really cool nature kind of thing where there'll be like shows kind of like Animal Planet or Nat Geo, but on YouTube. A leucistic king cobra. Oh my White God. king no, cobra with nothing blue eyes. Venomous. Nothing venomous. So I'm thinking about maybe hiring on a business person, someone that really knows business, not just someone that's passionate, but someone that can maybe help mold all our companies into something bigger and better. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. I'm pretty excited right now because you guys know that we had a couple clutches of mossy tree frog eggs. Because you guys know that we had a couple clutches of mossy tree frog eggs that didn't hatch because they were basically infertile. Well, today I was walking by and guess what? They are in implexus. So basically what happens is when frogs breed, it's called implexus. The male will actually grab the female, wrap around her, and that's how they actually fertilize the eggs. The first two clutches were infertile because we never saw Implexus. Now that we've seen Implexus, I'm assuming that this girl is going to lay eggs within the next 24 hours. And when she lays eggs, hopefully they're going to be fertile. And hopefully we can have some baby mossy tree frogs. I am so excited about this because again, I kind of given up. We had four males and a female. I thought maybe they're just never going to breed. So now we're one step closer to hopefully having some mossy tree frog babies. That would be so cool. And in this vlog today, I actually have to ask you guys for some help on a couple things. Maybe you can help me out. But uh, in the meantime, we have a bunch of other things going on. Let's have a great day together. Lori, I just want to know one thing. Who ratted me out about the snake? What snake? The ring tick. How did you find out? I literally walked down the stairs. So no one told you? No, no. one ratted you out? No, I saw How the container. Can I not keep, How can I, I not keep the container and said, what the hell is this? That's How exactly can I not keep a secret from you ever. Because you're the worst. You're just like the kids. Like you don't know how to hide or do anything, which is fine by me. That's <laughs> clearly disappointing to me. But <laughs> no, you're the worst. So are you mad? I mean, yeah, you're okay. No, I'm Why? not happy. Why? Why would I be happy about another retic? Because it's a Mochino retic. Do you know what its name is? Bye bye. No, its name is not yeah. Bye Bye. Uh, I came up with the name. I asked you guys yesterday what name. I, I'm sorry, I came up with the name on my own. Let me know if you guys like it down below. And I think once I tell you this name, you're going to love it and it, it'll endear it to you. No. Its name is Al Mochino. I'm going to call it Bye Bye. It's Al Mochino. Bye Bye is what its name is. <laughs> no, and anybody not. who's interested in rehoming Bye Bye, Email me. <laughs> Don't email her. <laughs> Al Machino is in the Reptarium for a long, long time. People, it's gonna change people's lives. But I can't believe how long, I mean, literally, you couldn't have been in the building for five minutes and you found that snake. How's that possible? I hid it from you. <laughs> Worst hide job ever. <laughs> I literally tripped over it. That's how. <laughs> Jeez. I guess I gotta get better at being sneaky. I'm pretty excited, guys, because we have these little tiny morning geckos. They are so cute. These are adult morning geckos right here, and they're actually two females. The reason we got them is we wanted to put them in with some of our dart frogs because we have like true palarium, paladariums. We have true, because we have some true paladariums where basically we have fish, we have the frogs, and then we'd have the morning geckos. But the thing that's really cool is take a look at what we just got right here. It looks like a couple eggs. The thing that's interesting, of course, this is part of the gen because there's no male in here and they look like they're fertile. So it looks like we've got some fertile parthenogenesis morning gecko eggs. Um, is there any other alternate pronunciations, please? That is so cool. I'm not exactly sure how long these guys take to incubate, but uh, when Bruce and Jessica get in tomorrow, because today's their day off, they probably know all about them. They are hatched really small because you can see how small the adults are, but it's going to be super cool to hatch some little morning geckos. And eventually, like I said, we'll hopefully put them in all of our dart frog cages. And that is definitely a first for here at the Reptarium. So there's really two things on my mind today I want to share with you guys that you may or may not be able to help me. You guys know that I'm really looking at trying to relaunch Animal Bites TV. This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. That's really going to be this really cool nature kind of thing where there'll be like shows kind of like Animal Planet or Nat Geo, but on YouTube, you know, something like that. Well, you know, we've got some people that are happy to be involved as far as the talent side of things. Obviously, we do a traveling show, these really cool like high-end shot, literally TV shows that are like 15 minutes long where we're traveling around the world doing animal adventures. We also have Andy Brandy, Casa Grandy for sharks. Max Strong has showed interest in maybe doing something. A few other people have expressed interest in maybe being a part of Animal Bites, but you know, it's going to take 
take a pretty considerable investment to do it the right way because we're going to have to have film crews, we're going to have to have travel, we're going to want really great kind of sponsors and involvement in it. And I think it could be really big to be totally honest with you. I'm not really 100% sure. But the reason I'm asking you guys is because I figured why not? I'm bringing you guys along on the journey so why not ask you guys? We're probably going to need some major investment behind this project because the first year we're going to be in production. We're going to be traveling the world, we're going to be filming, we're going to be doing stuff and it's going to take a pretty considerable amount of money to kind of fund the whole thing and hopefully it's going to turn out something big. If you happen to know someone or you're interested and in maybe being a partner on a project like this and you have the ability to kind of help invest in it, it's something I'd love to talk to you about. Again, I'm not begging for money here guys. I'm just saying that I don't know that I have the resources to make it happen by myself. So if I can bring someone on as kind of a partner in the project, it makes sense. If you do, I'm going to put a link in the description to my email address and you guys can uh, go ahead and email me with your thoughts. So the year is definitely coming to an end when it comes to production. We actually have a couple little Colubri clutches here that are the last kind of Corns King's milk. We do have a mangrove clutch that is due to hatch in about a month or so, but you can see these little monkeys here have pipped out. Looks like one egg is out. I don't know where the baby is. It's got to be in here. So, oh, there it is right there. Oh, it's a little butter corn snake. So that is it. It's a bummer when we get down to the last couple of clutches. I can't believe this one's hatching. This one should be hatching anytime. We got a little baby butter corn that's absolutely adorable. And uh, listen, guys, when these guys hatch out, that is it for production. Again, a mangrove clutch will hatch in about a month or something like that. But that's the last Colubri clutches that we'll have for the year. Got a handful of ball python clutches, and then we're back into the breeding season again when it comes to boas and pythons. Colubri's going to brumation. I tell you what, what an amazing year this has been, but uh, it is always sad to see it come to a close. Well, that last clutch that could potentially produce the banana camels is out, and I wanted to kind of show you guys the result. Of course, this was a chocolate pinstripe bred to a banana spinner chocolate. So uh, this is a normal chocolate ball python here. For those of you guys that are wondering, just a really cool co-dominant dark morph animal. We got a couple kind of variations of spider in here, a normal spider ball python, and then a spinner, which happens to be a pinstripe and a spider ball python mix. Then we started getting into some of the chocolate stuff, right? So this is a chocolate pinstripe, just like the adult female is. Again, just chocolate and pinstripe mix. But then when you start getting into the super chocolate stuff, because both the parents have chocolate in it, you get what's called a camo ball python. So this is what the animal looks like that I'm hoping with banana will turn all purple. So this is a super chocolate and it's a pinstripe. And again, I got to imagine all that dark pigment on it is just going to turn purple. Of course, we produce the pastel banana camos, but again, the pastel blows out the purple, so we don't know what it's going to look like. So again, don't know until next year. And then we produce a few of these beautiful monkeys right here. These guys are absolutely gorgeous. Of course, these are the banana chocolate pinstripe. So the only thing that this is missing when it gets to that banana camo is the super chocolate version, right? So this has like one chocolate on one side, but not on the other side. Nevertheless, really beautiful. And in the end, we produce a lot of really cool banana chocolate stuff. I love that combination of animals. We produce banana chocolate pins. We produce banana chocolates. Of course, we produce the pastel banana camos and a bunch of other stuff. So hey, it was still a really amazing year. And uh, that's the end of the banana camos for this year. And it gives me something to look forward to next year. And then we just have two eggs in this clutch. And talking about dark animals, this was actually a black pastel pinstripe bred to a mahogany. Now the black pastel pinstripe, of course, that black pastel is a kind of a dark animal. The mahogany is similar to the chocolates a little bit, which is pretty cool. But this happens to be one of these is just a normal ball python. So this doesn't have any of the mutations at all. But this guy hatched out and I was pretty darn excited about it. Just look at that thing. That thing has got such busy pattern. It's absolutely incredible. This is actually a black pastel mahogany pinstripe. So this is kind of the all gene animal that we're actually hoping for and it turned out absolutely incredible. I've told you before that the chocolate and the mahogany mix together and kind of produce a super version so I had never bred it to the black pastel before and the results were pretty cool. It's not like a super version but you've got kind of two doses of different types of dark animals and then it really busies the pattern up like I wasn't expecting. So this again is a chocolate pinstripe mahogany animal and I love it to death. I think I'm definitely going to raise this up and start working on it. And again think about this in the banana stuff, all that purple coming out, ooh doggy, that's going to be a pretty amazing animal, but uh, hey, like I said, no more banana camel potential for the year, but hey, we've got something that we're going to definitely look forward to hopefully hitting next year. Hey, Lori, what? there's another snake I want to get. No. No, 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 Kelsey will, Kelsey will be okay with this. Mm, no, check this out, this. check this out. A leucistic king cobra. 
Oh my White God. King Dude, Cobra with blue venomous. eyes. Nothing venomous. Nothing venomous. No. There's a no, new cystic King care. Cobra. Kevin McCurley's no. getting it, and I'm going to get it. You from will him. not get that. I'm no. not even kidding. <laughs> Kelsey. I'm very smart, Kelsey. No. The other thing I wanted to kind of bring up to you guys, and again, I, this is just kind of spitfire. I bring you guys along on the journey. Spend some time on my mind for a little while now. You guys know that I'm an idea guy. I run a lot of different business. I've got a lot of other things going on. But to be honest with you, everyone's kind of at max capacity here, right? We are just stretched to the limits. I'm thinking about maybe bringing on a business mind. You know, I'm thinking like the Steve Jobs type, right? Someone that could come in and help run an entire company. Not only make everything that we do better, but also the things that I'm trying to do that I'm not doing really well. You guys know the Reptile app game went sideways a lot because I was so busy that I didn't really manage it properly. Reptile Prime, great coconut bedding, but we want to launch like the backdrops and a bunch of other products. There's a whole bunch of business ideas, not only in reptiles, but also other business ideas that I want to launch and get rolling. But to be honest with you, I don't know that I could do it because we kind of have only so many hours in the day. So I'm thinking about maybe hiring on a business person, someone that really knows business, not just someone that's passionate, but someone that can maybe help mold all our companies into something bigger and better better. I don't know if that's something that you or someone you might want to get involved in, that someone that really buys into it and wants to be a part of the future to take this thing to the next level. If you do, again, I will put a link in the description to my email. You can send me a resume, your ideas, your thoughts, and uh, maybe we can talk and we can hire someone on. I think that kind of having someone that oversees all of my insanity might be a really good move for me. And like I mentioned, we had an absolutely incredible year this year. I just want to show you a few of the scaleless corn snakes that we produced. Trust me, it was a really good scaleless corn snake year. This happens to be a snow scaleless corn snake right here. Sometimes the snow scaleless will be completely patternless. This one has the little white circles down its back, which makes it pretty awesome. And one of my favorite scaleless corn snakes certainly is aneurythristics or black scaleless corn snakes. I mean, I tell you, there's just something about when you strip away those scales, the pattern, the color, it looks literally like it's shaded with a pencil. Unbelievably ridiculous. Then you could take the anery one step further and actually add diffuse corn to it. So this is an anery diffuse corn right here. We're talking. I mean, that thing just looks like lavender and beautiful. And that diffuse, of course, blows out all the pattern on the side. This thing is ridiculous. One of my favorite scale of snakes that we produce this year is this one right here. This is actually an albino diffuse corn. They call them fire, but it's a scaleless. And oh my gosh, I mean, the color on that thing is, it's surreal. I mean, I've never seen a snake that color before. Absolutely insane. And then this is actually a creamsicle corn snake. Again, another kind of albino, but because it's got a little bit of the emery influence originally, it makes it more of that orange color rather than a red color. Really pretty snake. But honestly, even just normal scaleless corn snakes, this is just a normal scale this corn snake right here is still an absolutely ripper of an animal. I mean, look at how incredible it is. I never thought that we'd see scaleless corn snakes 15, 20 years ago, and now some of the mutations coming out of them are just mind bending. And then in that kind of normal corn snake, this is actually an Oka tea or an Abbott's Oka tea corn snake. It's just got a little bit darker blacks and more defined color. Again, you strip those scales away and it looks really absolutely amazing. I love Oka tea corns and in particular the Abbott's Oka teas, but the scaleless ones, they take the cake for sure. Then this one here kind of blew me away. This is actually an amber striped corn snake. Now the amber is actually a hypo caramel and then of course the stripe. So this is a quad mutation when you add the scaleless to it and it's absolutely just wild looking. And trust me there is a ton more that I'm showing you but I'm going to end on this one right here. This is actually a scaleless tessera corn snake. Oh doggy. I tell you what those racing stripes on this thing are ridiculous for sure. So I want to just give you an oversight of some of the scaleless corn snakes we produced this year. And again I only scratched the surface to be honest with you. There was a lot of good stuff. Again it was a really amazing production year this year. In the end, if you guys think you can help me out with either thing, maybe someone that's interested in the animal bites thing, or you're some the next Steve Jobs or something like that, and you want to get involved in some business with me, I'd love to hear from you again. The link is in the description, info at BHB Reptiles. Let me know what you guys are thinking. I hope that you enjoyed the vlog. If you did enjoy it, here's another video I think that you guys definitely want to click on. Here's a playlist if you just want to roll through a bunch of stuff over here. You can hit that subscribe button. While you're at it, turn those post notifications on for me. Have a wonderful day. Be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.